Kabo, Clive, Nyakwizi. I'm 24 this year, and I'm a rapper. I love music. Uh, I was watching like this the, this program. It's called uh, the Newsroom, and there's this like girl there. Her name is Sloane Sabbath. She says to this guy, she's like, um, she's talking to him, she's trying to inspire him, and she tells him uh, if he's heard of the term "greater fool," and it's an, it's an economic term. Um, and, you know, they and it says that the greater fool is the perfect blend of uh, the perfect blend of self delusion and ego to think that you can succeed where others have failed. second like rap piece it wasn't even that long it was probably like I don't know like eight bars you know and um, I write this I pin this thing down and I'm like yo I'm about to go kill it I'm about to be the sickest rapper in the world and uh, I get ready I get the beat you know I learned these lyrics it was like a quick rap because I was listening to too much Eminem back then and it was like really quick pa -da -pa -da -pa -da -pa. I knew the thing I promise you I knew it and I stepped on the, the stage and uh, as I get on the stage, like I start rapping, you know, everybody's like, yo, going crazy, you know, white girls are in the back, like, oh my gosh. And then like halfway through an eight bar, 30 second verse, like like 30, uh, 30 second verse, I forget like my lyrics completely, right? And I'm just like there, and I just like drop the mic. I'd like drop the mic, and like it had that weird like feedback sound like, and I walked off the stage and I came out like in the back door over here and I was like depressed bro I was like yo that was like my first ever performance I messed it up like what the hell am I gonna do now so I walk out of here and one of the guys that was like that saw the show it was a friend of mine he came through over here and they come out and I'm thinking obviously everyone's gonna laugh at me everyone's like screaming and shouting like dude that was so dope like Yo, that was so cool. And I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, yo, like that was part of the act. Like these guys thought that when I forgot my lyrics and I dropped the mic, like I did it on purpose for the thing. 
What I didn't realize was that that was like sort of the same year that 8 Mile came out and everyone was like a battle cat and a battle rapper and everything. So me dropping the mic like added to that and it like sort of helped me out. So I was really, really happy about that. Um, so, you know, I got away with that one. And then the year after that, I think I sang at the competition. I sang like some Backstreet Boys song to make sure that I was safe with everything that I did. But I'm telling you, like these were, these, like this was the place. Like Aston Manor was a first for everything. Um, uh, my English classes specifically, were the classes I enjoyed the most. Um, I just like like literature and, and, and reading and you know just the English language generally, which is maybe why you know writing and blogging and being a rapper is what I do. But we, uh, especially in English, um, I just remember all my English teachers. All of them are weird. Like, and I say this with all respect. But like, all English teachers are really weird, but they're the most inspiring people in the world. And um, it's in these classrooms, like in these hallways and stuff, that like the dream really was like birthed, you know, and that I believe that maybe I can sort of like leave here and like you know use this rap thing as like a as a weird art form, and then like from there, you know, things then moved on and. And uh, we started sort of like learning how to do rap better, you know. And we all go through weird phases. Like uh, I remember the once I came to school, I was wearing like a big shirt, and then it had like I bought it at the flea market. It had like uh, one. Of, it was one of those rapper shirts. It was uh, Dr. Dre, um, Snoop Dogg, I think, Eminem, and then like Tupac or something like that. Like you know, like a top five rapper shirt. But I had like these trainers on, like literal, like I'm gonna go for a hike trainers on my feet. And then like baggy jeans and a, and a, like a like a, a hoodie, but like a, it was like a skater hoodie. So, and it shows you like the different phases we go through. So my, my white friends are skaters, you know? So, you know, hence the weird jeans. At home, my mom bought me trainers cause black moms always buy you like, you know? So there were Nike trainers and then, um, you know, like, so it was like a, a weird combination of of South Africa and where we had find ourselves at the time. And so, but it was all thanks to this place, though. If it wasn't for this place, man, like, you know, who knows? Who knows what kind of guy could have come out like? But that's Aston, yo. Sure. Nobody gonna tell my Greater fools who just sit and debate the news from the realest the skater dudes are like Kim will be making